Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the second lecture in this week on finite time stability. So, what were we looking at last time? In the previous uh, bit, what we've seen is the need uh, for looking at non-Lipschitz systems or systems which have non-unique solutions at the origin yeah so that's how that's what we formalized that uh, the Lipschitz property essentially means that solutions uh, exist and are unique however because we are looking at notions of finite time stability uh, it is not quite possible to uh, have unique solutions from the origin especially in backward time and therefore we do not require it even in for forward time all right so that is why we settled on the notion of having uh, uniqueness in forward time everywhere but at the origin so this is the notion that we choose to work with while defining the notion of finite time stability yeah so so that's the system we were working with it's an autonomous system right? there is no explicit time dependence yeah so it's of the form y dot equals f of y and on top of that uh, we have that f is continuous in the entire domain containing the origin uh, f is locally Lipschitz in the domain but excluding the origin itself and f0 is 0 this is simply the standard assumption that is required to ensure that 0 is the equilibrium of the system right now um, this essentially guarantees that solutions exist for all initial conditions in the domain and um, this Lipschitz condition essentially guarantees that the solutions are unique for all initial conditions uh, in the domain but at the origin yeah so we don't want to deal with the origin because there is possibility of non-unique solutions at the origin if you are demanding finite time stability yeah right now we also defined the notion of finite time stability and how do we define it we say that the origin is finite time stable if there exists a neighborhood n which contains the origin inside the domain d and a settling time function which maps the neighborhood to some time zero to infinity yeah, and the settling time is exactly what you would understand from it it is the time at which the solutions go to zero okay so obviously as you can imagine if you start at the so so this settling time function essentially maps initial conditions to the time in which these initial conditions go to zero okay? So obviously if you start at zero since you are already at the equilibrium you would expect the settling time to be nothing but zero itself and we also want that tx0 actually converges to zero as the initial conditions converge to zero right so notice that we never say equal to here right because we do not want to look at initial conditions at zero because our assumptions are on sets that exclude zero or the origin yeah so therefore we always talk of convergence to the origin and so on okay so the second requirement is uh, the second requirement of finite time stability is exactly the uh, convergence the finite time convergence it says that if your initial conditions are in fact in this neighborhood excluding the origin then we have unique solutions right which depend on initial conditions um, on this time interval which is closed on the left and open on the right so it is from 0 to tx0 uh, and it is important to note that the solutions are never 0 in this interval but as time goes to this value yeah we don't say equal to again right because this is not part of the interval so as time goes to this value tx0 we say that uh, x actually goes to 0 okay all right 
So again, we are carefully excluding zero from the mix. Yeah, we still want to converge to zero, but we never want to start there and so on. Yeah? I mean, if you're starting there, that's considered as a special case where you're starting in the equilibrium and staying in the equilibrium. So there is no notion of, I mean, we don't have to, the finite time that we get is zero anyway, right? The finite convergence time that we get is zero anyway. That's what is encapsulated here, right? But we do not want to start at zero otherwise, okay? And we are always looking at converging to zero. Yeah, so limit also means converging to zero, right? And this, this last requirement is obviously Lyapunov stability that I'm not going to repeat. We've already seen uh, that Lyapunov stability is a requirement of asymptotic stability as well. And therefore it is but natural that a finite time stability notion would also have Lyapunov stability uh, as one of the requirements. Okay, great. Now that we understand uh, finite time stability, uh, we have a few conclusions that can be directly obtained. Again, I'm not going to prove any of these things um, in this uh, course. This is a very short introduction to finite time and uh, sliding, finite time stability and sliding mode control. Right? Um, so uh, we are simply going to state a few results. Right? So the first sort of proposition, which is an almost like saying an outcome of finite time stability is that is what we state here uh, zero if zero is a finite time i will just say if zero is finite time stable for one for the system that we already cons considered um and let and we therefore have this we already have this uh, neighborhood n and uh, settling time function t corresponding to this finite time stability definition then what is understood is that um, a the solution What is understood is that the solution is uh, uniquely defined and most importantly uh, it is understood that x t 0 x 0 is exactly equal to 0 for all t greater than or equal to t x. Okay. All right. Yeah. So once you've essentially, uh, how how one would say this is that is uniquely defined for all x zero in the neighborhood n. Okay. What this is sort of trying to say is that um, once you fix an initial condition, you have a very uniquely defined path. And the important thing to remember is that, I mean, it's sort of understood just from the second piece here that once you, that you will reach the origin in this time tx0 and what happens beyond time tx0? Well, you are already at the equilibrium, so you're not going to move unless there is some disturbance, but we are not considering the disturbance cases here. This is for the purpose of defining uh, for a disturbance free or a noise free situation, right? The, the notion of finite time stability, right? Therefore, once you reach the origin, which is an equilibrium, you're never going to move. Therefore, that's what is essentially said here, that once you've reached the origin, you will always stay there for all time beyond. Right? It makes sense. So this is not a very complicated notion. Okay. The next thing to remember is that the solution uh, the way this is written is one has to be careful here. Uh,
actually there is a dot here which means that uh, the purpose of writing this dot is it's uniquely defined with respect to the time right and in here we say that um, uh, xt the the solution is uh, actually this is fine i'll just keep the time here it's evident that it's uniformly defined in time right and here i'm going to say it's continuous um, for all x0 in a neighborhood of the origin uniformly in time okay so the first one says that the solutions go to zero and will remain there forever the second one says that the solutions are continuous in the initial conditions okay this is important okay and the final assertion of this proposition uh, proposition is that uh, t the function t of x0 is unique and again continuous in x0 okay so these are the uh, important sort of outcomes from the definition of finite time stability okay now what do we want to do obviously we've always seen that uh, these notions of um, asymptotic stability these definitions never really helped us right so what we really want to do is to uh, sort of have um, some lyapunov like conditions okay so that's really what we would like to do have some lyapunov like conditions uh, to characterize um, finite time stability as well okay and so that is sort of what we are moving towards right so let's see how to state this i'm wondering if all right all right that's fine um so i will just call this lyapunov like characterizations okay i'm just uh, looking at lyapunov characterizations for finite time stability okay all right let's see let's see now um suppose um i'm going to start with a more uh, well i'm just going to directly jump into the simpler case where uh, and and we already know the notion of uh, v and, and and so on and so forth uh, at the lyapunov function itself so we define as before v dot of x as del v del x f of x for a v in c1 right so if you have a continuously differentiable function v then you can actually make this kind of a definition for v dot okay all right and and this by the way this works even for this uh, sort of special case where you have um, solutions which are you know unique but not at the origin and unique in forward time all right so this uh, lyapunov uh, derivative idea is still valid here yeah that v dot turns out to be exactly this okay all right so so what we need to understand is that 
uh, important v dot is well defined in d removing zero <coughs> right because our solutions are well defined in d removing zero okay all right so what is the main result so what is the main result this is um, let me see Lyapunov I just call it Lyapunov theorem right I'll just call it a Lyapunov finite time theorem <coughs> and what does it say suppose there exists a V which is continuously differentiable and has the following properties V is positive definite right this is a standard requirement I mean V is just seen as a function of some X therefore we just need to verify the positive definiteness of V we already know how to do this next v dot is continuous well v dot being continuous is already evident from the fact that v c1 so v dot is negative definite on the deleted neighborhood on the deleted neighborhood of the origin right so it's negative definite but you need to verify only on the deleted neighborhood of the origin so um, yeah yeah so you don't need to so if you if you remember uh, negative definiteness had two properties that you check as has two conditions to verify one is that it is the function is zero at zero and it is strictly positive for all non-zero values okay so in this case you just need to check that it is strictly negative for all non-zero values of the state okay and that's it <coughs> okay and finally we want to uh, you need this special condition right that there exist uh, k positive and an alpha in 0 1 and a neighborhood uh, V inside D right, of origin such that v dot plus k v to the power alpha is less than equal to zero on this v deleting the origin okay if you have this if you have these properties then apologies then zero is finite time stable also you can actually find or upper bound uh, the settling time function right? uh, as t x zero is less than or equal to 1 over k 1 minus alpha v of x to the power 1 minus alpha for all x in n when n is as defined in the finite time stability definition okay now uh, it is 
uh, important to sort of try to understand this result right i mean the first one i mean the lyapunov finite time stability theorem is not too different from the typical asymptotic stability theorem in fact the first and second look rather similar right so we require that v is positive definite and v dot is negative definite on this deleted neighborhood on top of that we have this kind of a funny uh, convergence type of a condition which says that there exists some positive scalar k and some um, exponent alpha between 0 and 1 yeah strictly inside 0 and 1 yeah never 1 and never 0 and a neighborhood v inside d of origin says that v dot plus kv alpha less than equal to 0 right and if you have these three conditions we are in fact claiming that you have finite time stability okay in fact if you would understand that from a and b you would be immediately able to claim some kind of lyapunov stability yeah i'm not claiming i'm not saying that i'm giving a proof of this theorem but i'm just trying to indicate why this might work yeah so from a and b itself it's not difficult to see that you would have lyapunov stability the only thing that's left for us is to conclude the finite time convergence and for that we can actually focus on this third statement right uh, if, if i try to look at this sort of third statement a bit more carefully yeah it basically says that i have v dot is less than or equal to minus kv to the power alpha and if you see this is a scalar differential inequality yeah it's not a differential equation but it's a differential inequality right but it's not too difficult i mean you can deal with this in an exactly similar way as you would deal with an equality right so this will be something like and simply again this is because of the fact that v is positive definite that we can all do this so v is scalar value so it's actually a scalar differential inequality right so i can actually do things like this and integrate both sides right and if you see v alpha is less than one right so i will get something like um uh, I will get something like v1 plus alpha, I guess, divided by 1 plus alpha. Mm. I'm just trying to see if I'm doing this right. Uh, no, I apologize. This will be v, not 1 plus alpha, but 1 minus alpha because alpha is in the denominator, right? So this is 1 minus alpha and this is going to be less than or equal to minus k t yeah and so if i solve from here for the value of v what am i going to get i'm going to get v is actually less than or equal to minus k t or minus k times 1 minus alpha t and um, this to the power 1 by 1 minus alpha. Right, this to the power 1 minus. Right, right. I believe that's okay. I believe that's okay. Right? And because um, so this is 1 over 1 minus alpha this is fine and you know that 1 minus alpha is strictly positive by assumption because alpha lies exactly between 0 and 1 right so this is strictly positive and therefore this is strictly positive as well right? in fact uh, one can very easily show that 1 minus alpha lies between 0 and 1 as well right right 1 minus alpha strictly lies between 0 and 1 okay um so this is something that is right 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 okay okay and now if i want to if i try to equate this to 0 
right? Suppose I equate this quantity to zero, what happens? Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So, so I, I see that the expression here has been given in terms of the V itself. All right. All right. Uh, let me actually try to see. So the left hand side would have more terms. That's what I'm missing here. So what I'm missing here is like a V0, right? So where V0 is equal to V at X0, right? So in fact, I'm going to erase this and rewrite this carefully because I'm going to have V to the power one minus alpha is less than equal to k v0 <clears throat> yeah that's what it makes sense right it, it, this has to be v0 minus k1 minus alpha to the party correct 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 this is exactly it and now if I make sure that if, if this equal to zero happens, then I know that V is obviously positive definite. So it can never be less than zero, right? So I know that V will exactly be zero, right? V will exactly be zero, right? And if V is exactly zero by positive definiteness, I also understand that my states will also exactly be zero, right? So that's sort of what I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So this is exactly what it is, one minus alpha. This was also one minus alpha. So I should not miss this exponent here as well, right? And now from here, from this condition, I know that the t i need will be actually equal to v0 to the power 1 minus alpha divided by k times 1 minus alpha right and that is exactly uh, this bound Yeah, in fact, this should be not x, but x0. Yeah, there's not x, but x0, right? This is a function of x0, right? So that's exactly what we get from here, okay? So this, so obviously this is the time we get, and, and this is obviously conservative because all Lyapunov analysis is conservative. We already understand that. And that is why we say that the settling time is always upper bounded. Yeah, you never arrive at an exact value of settling time function, but you usually always, almost always arrive at an uh, upper bound for the settling time function. Okay. So I hope you understand now that from the first two, you get the Lyapunov stability. That was the first requirement. And the next requirement was, of course, that your finite time convergence, which you get from here. And in fact, the expression for the settling time function is also rather easy to obtain just by integrating this sc uh, scalar differential inequality condition right, that we have written here. And just by integrating it carefully, I was, of course, not doing it properly to begin with. But now that you've done it carefully, there is also the value at time t and the value at initial time right, at 0. And then divide by one minus alpha. So this is this integral evaluates to this. In fact, right. Uh, so this will actually be from yeah. If you are being careful, this will be from v zero to v, and this will be from zero to t, right? This definite integral, and that's what we've done here now. And you just get a minus kt. And once you have that, you know that you just need to equate this guy to zero, because that means that this is going to be exactly zero because v can never be less than zero. And once you have that, you know that the t can be calculated like this. All right. Okay, great. So we are left with a little bit of the converse theorem and we'll look at a 
simple example in the next session.